a very very good evening to all of you friends on behalf of the entire team at grade up i take the privilege of welcoming each and every one of you for today's live session a very very good evening to each and every one of you out there so friends today we are back with a very very important session a session on a very very important and a burning news the election commission of india a constitutional body an autonomous body which has been formed under the framework of the indian constitution has declared that in the state of west bengal in the state assembly election the election is going to be held in eight phases west bengal election is to be held in eight phases west bengal will have its election very soon and the election commission of india has declared the dates now as an aspirant who is preparing for a law entrance examination so as an aspirant who is preparing for a law entrance examination what is the relevance of such a news what are those things that a student who is preparing for clat elet symbiosis mhct should know about this news there are many many things that we should know for example why do we have elections secondly who conducts this election what is the power of the election commission of india what are its duties what is the tenure as well as the composition of the election commission of india how can the officers or the election commissioners be removed from office what is the tenure of these election commissioners and who is the present election commissioner so many many things there are a number of things that a student who is preparing from for law we are not you do not need to know about the politics of it whether what bjp is saying or what mamta banerji is saying you don't need to know anything of it all that you need to know from this particular information is what is the power of the election commission who appoints the election commissioner what is the tenure of the election commissioner what are its power have i made myself clear so when whenever we are picking up stories or news events you should look that news through the prism of a law aspirant what should a law aspirant know about such news unless and until you are aware of what is the powers of the election commissioner or what is his duty who appoints him what is his tenure how can he be removed because over the years what we have seen is that clat definitely picks up stories or news items over the last one year and then will not very will not in deeply is going to ask you too many tough questions but they want you that a student who is preparing for law should be aware of certain basic things relating to election you are not required to memorize a particular article but you should know what does the constitution empowers so today we bring to you a very very important session on election laws in india keeping in mind that the election commission of india 
has very recently declared the schedule for the eight phase West Bengal election. But before that, some very, very important announcement. It's a very, very last chance, the last chance to win or to get 60% off on your grade up super. Use the code super and you get 60% off on your grade up subscription. This is the final chance for you to avail the grade up super subscription offer 60% flat off on grade up super. Grade up also brings to you crack clat 2021 in 30 days. So definitely the batches are have started. We are going to conduct this session in YouTube channel. In YouTube, we are going to conduct a very important series called crack clat 2021 in 30 days. So definitely do remember and definitely follow these very important sessions. GradeUp also brings to you a two month revision course on current affairs and legal events. GradeUp also brings to you a booster crash course for CLAT 2021. GradeUp also brings to you an express crash course. An express crash course for ALIT, uh, sorry, for uh, SLAT and MHCT. For SLAT and MHCT, GradeUp also brings to you an express crash course for MHCT and SLAT 2021. And the biggest news. We are going to start a daily legal affairs series from tomorrow onwards. A very, very important announcement to make. GradeUp is starting with a daily legal affairs for CLAT, ALIT, SLAT, MHCT and other law entrance aspirants. You will get a detailed analysis of important legal developments across India and across the world. This is going to these classes that we are going to conduct under the topic daily legal affairs starting from tomorrow that is 1st of March 2021. So do not miss any of these classes because we are going to deal every day, every day with certain very, very important legal news which you should be aware of. Okay. So the big news is that the election commission has declared that the West Bengal election will be conducted in eight phases. It's a very big news. But from the prism, from the prism of a law aspirant, what is its importance? How is it important? What are the things that a student of law or a student who is aspiring to get into a law school should know. Let us go through them. Now, these are certain classes which is going to help you in understanding the role of the Election Commission of India. Now, before we enter into what the Election Commission of India is, first, let me tell you that why do, why do we require election? What is the need for having election. Now, since India is a democracy, since India happens to be a democracy. Now, in a democracy, it's very important that the ruler is the people. It is the people who decides. It is the people who decides who is going to rule them for the next five years. The the leaders are not supreme. The supreme is the people. Every citizen who is above the age of 18 and is enrolled with the Election Commission of India has a right to vote. Every citizen of this country who has been enrolled with the Election Commission of India has a right to vote. Now, in 
a democracy, the people will choose their leaders. Now, how will they choose their leaders? And that mechanism is known as election. That particular mechanism by which a person will let his voice know. He is exercising his right of adult franchisee. And that is very, very important. Now, keeping this in mind, part 15 of the constitution, part 15 of the Indian constitution, there's an entire part which is dedicated to election. Now, the constitution of India, the constitution of India mandates that there will be an election commission of India which will have the power which will have the power of superintendence, direction and control over the entire election process of the union parliament, state legislature, office of the president and office of the vice president. So the election commission of India is a particular body which is created, which is created by the constitution itself. The constitution itself creates a particular body. This body is known as the Election Commission of India. And this body is empowered insofar as superintendence, direction and control over the entire process of election of the state legislature, Union Parliament, Office of the President and Office of the Vice President. Have I made myself clear? Have I made myself clear to each and every one of you out there? Please tell me, are you guys understanding? Now, the need for an election commission is always there because without the election commission, how can you have election. Every citizen has been given a particular right to vote. They choose their representatives and political parties are certain essential institutions of a democracy because people will choose one of those parties who is going to rule them for the next five years. So, there, under the Indian constitution, let me repeat, which is very, very important for every one of you, is the fact that part 15 of the Indian constitution deals with the election commission. Now, there are certain articles under the Indian constitution, especially 324 to 329, now, these articles, you don't need to remember any of them, deals with power, function, appointment, removal, tenure, eligibility of the election commission. So, the election commission is an office, a constitutional office, an independent office. Now, this is formed by the constitution itself. The constitution lays down rules and regulation relating to the powers, the function, how, is a, how, how are they appointed, removal of these people, tenure, eligibility of the election commission. So by and large, what we see is that, that the framework of the election commission, the framework of the election commission has been categorically mentioned under the Indian constitution. The Indian constitution makes it very, very clear. The Indian constitution makes the election commission a body which is going to have the power of superintendence, direction, and control. Superintendence, direction and control over the entire election 
process of for election election of the union parliament state legislature election election of the vice president of india and election of the president of india so there are four elections that takes place four election every five years the general election state assembly election election of the vice president of india and election of the president of india over the entire process of this election it is the election commissioner which has the power of superintendence direction and control the role of the election commission is to conduct election now election does not mean only state legislature election or the union parliament election no many of you do not know this and he, and that's the reason why i am emphasizing on this particular thing that it is the duty of the election commission also to declare the date of the president's election as well as the vice president's election have i made myself clear have i made myself clear to each and every one of you have i made myself clear is that clear to each and every one of you okay okay very good okay great great now now let's understand that every citizen of the country every citizen of this country has a right to vote provided he is a voter in the list which is declared by the election commission of india that means in the voter list his name should feature and he is enrolled with the election commission of india now please try to understand this that the method by which the the country adopted the rule of voting is a rule called adult suffrage adult suffrage simply means right of the citizens to vote and choose their representative adult suffrage simply means adult suffrage simply means right of the people right of every citizen to vote and elect their representative now here again as a student who is aspiring to get into a law school should also have certain additional knowledge originally the age to cast your vote in india was 21 years mind you it was only rajiv gandhi's government which passed the 61st constitutional amendment and by virtue of the 61st constitutional amendment the age of voting was reduced from 21 to 18 years today people who are at 18 has a right to vote every person who is 18 and above has a right to vote but originally under the indian constitution baba saheb ambedkar b r ambedkar the man who wrote the indian constitution very categorically stated that the age of voting should be 21 it was only after the 61st constitutional amendment that the voting age came to be reduced to 18 years very very important thing very very important and a crucial information that every one of you should have i am sure that you guys are noting whatever i am stating okay moving ahead now let's look at the composition of the election commission of india 
what is the election commission of india who are the people inside the election commission of india now please try to understand as on today the election commission of india consists of the chief election commissioner and two other election commissioners as on today as on today what exists as on today the election commission consists of the chief election commissioner and two other election commissioner now the chief election commissioners and the two other chief election uh, two other election commissioners are have equal power have equal privilege and can do everything there is no nothing that the chief election commissioner can do which the, uh, the which the other two cannot do they have equal powers the chief election commissioner is the head of the institution so he is called chief their salaries are all same they have their same type of bungalows which are the government allocate for them their salaries their privileges their perks everything is the same their pension will be the same but he is the first amongst equal like for example you have the chief justice of india and other judges of the supreme court is there something that the chief justice can only pass a particular order which other judges cannot pass no no chief justice can pass any order other judges also can pass any order there is no restriction that other judges cannot pass this order which only the chief justice can pass similarly similarly the chief election commissioner is also equal to other two election commissioners and that is the principle on which the election commission is made of course the chief election commissioner is the first amongst the equals but he is do not forget that he is also an equal now let's understand who appoints them how are they removed so the appointing authority the appointing authority of the election commission of india the appointing authority of the election commission of india is the president of india the president of india appoints the election commissioner the chief election commissioner and the two other election commissioners so how are they removed now the constitution does not say how can they removed the process but they say they chief election commissioner as well as other election commissioners can be removed through a process which is similar to the removing of a supreme court judge now how is a supreme court judge removed the the constitution says the process is similar to the removal of the president of india now how is a president removed and that term is called impeachment a similar process of impeachment is to be applied for the removal of a supreme court judge and a similar rules similar process has to be applied for removing the election commissioner have i made myself clear now election commissioner can be removed by a process which is similar to that of the removal of a supreme court judge do mind it do keep this in your mind friends these are very very important and crucial things that i believe each and every one who is watching i am sure that you are taking down notes of these things because friends believe you me believe you me if you think that clat is too easy i am sorry clat is not that very very easy am i clear 
CLAT is not that very, very easy. You should have a good grasp of important legal events at your palm. You cannot say that I don't know. You can't say that. And I'm sure you, each and every one of you are intelligent, are smart, are hardworking, but you have to be just. You have to be just a little patient and a little calm. I know that you guys are all studying really hard for both your CLAT exam as well as for your boards. I do appreciate that. I do understand. Okay. Now, what is the tenure of the Election Commission? There is a fixed tenure of the Election Commission. Six years or till they attain the age of 65. Six years or until they age or un until they become 65. So there is a fixed tenure that has been provided by the Indian constitution itself in so far as the office tenure of the election commissioner. Now, what are their salaries, their perks, and their status? The chief election commissioner and the two other election commissioners get same houses, same perks, same salary, same status as a judge of the Supreme Court of India. So, on st in status, insofar as the status is concerned, a judge of the Supreme Court and the Chief Election Commissioner or the other two Election Commissioner, they all stand at same parity. They are all same insofar as their status, salary and perks are concerned. So the Chief Election Commissioner and the two other Election Commissioners have the same status salary and perk as that of a judge of the Supreme Court of India. Have I made myself clear? Have I made myself clear to each and every one of you friends? Please tell me. Okay. Okay. Priyanka says yes. Okay. Fantastic. Fantastic. I need more replies from you guys. I need more replies from you unless and until you give me your reply. I will not be in a position where I can understand whether you guys are understanding or not. Okay. Okay. Some replies coming, but late. Thank you. Okay. 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 Very good. Very good. Very good. Okay. Now, now let's understand the election commission of India in so far as its duties or what does the Election Commission of India do? Very recently, we saw the Election Commission of India declaring the schedule of West Bengal election. On which date will elections take place at a particular place? So apart from this function, what are the other functions of the Election Commission of India? The Election Commission of India decides matters relating to recognition of a political party. Now, suppose tomorrow you want to set up your own party. For example, Aam Admi Party is a very new party. I'm sure most of you know it. Aam Admi Party is a very new party. It came into being a couple of years back. Right? Tomorrow, Another group of people want to bring their own party, make their own party. So, parties, who recognizes these parties? It is the duty of the Election Commission of India. It is the uh, Election Commission of India that recognizes political parties. 
it decides the election commission of india decides matters relating to election symbol now every party has its own symbol bjp has a different symbol congress has a different symbol bahujan samajwadi has a different symbol trinamool congress has a different symbol aia dmk has a different symbol and dmk has a different symbol the communist party of india has a different symbol the shiv sena has a different symbol so who who is the body that decides matters also relating to election symbols it is the election commission of india it is also the duty of the election commission of india to implement to implement something which is called the model code of conduct for political parties from the day the schedule of the election is declared it also that means the election commission also scrutinizes the nomination papers of the candidates so the election commission of india also scrutinizes also scrutinizes the nomination papers of the election candidate and finally it also declares the result it also declares the rate dates and schedule of the election so these are by far the most important functions of the election commission of india from this slide itself from this particular slide itself you will understand how important is the role of the election commission of india in maintaining the democracy in india indian democracy survives because of this very very important constitutional body election commission and how efficient is the election commission i say it is the most efficient body in india it conducts election it declares the results and helps in the gradual transmission of to government have you seen i'm sure you must have seen what happened by, in donald trump in us donald trump it was not a very smooth transition for the biden administration it was a very uncomfortable transition donald trump did create some ruckus and the transition was not smooth now when you see india it's a huge democracy 1.3 billion people election is happening smooth transition smooth decision everything smooth and we must give a hats off to this incredible constitutional body for upholding our democracy the election commission of india the election commission of india also decides dispute relating to the office of the president and vice president now the, if there is any kind of a election dispute in so far as the office of the president and the election of the vice president is concerned now the election commission will not decide those matters on the contrary who is going to decide the matters the supreme court of india the supreme court of india i repeat the supreme court of india will decide disputes it is the supreme court of india which is going to decide disputes relating to the election of the president and the vice president of india whereas in case there is a dispute relating to the union parliament election or a state legislature it is to be decided by the high court but in case there is a dispute 
in so far as the election of the president and vice president is concerned the supreme court of india has been empowered under the indian constitution to deal with those disputes so are you guys understanding the fine line or the thin line difference between the role of the supreme court and the role of the high court in so far as election disputes are concerned have i made it absolutely clear for each and every one of you okay 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 fantastic i have a question for you who was the first chief election commissioner of india who was the first chief election commissioner of india who was the first chief election commissioner of india okay i got answer sukumar sen sukumar sen very very good very good sukumar sen was the first chief election commissioner of india good 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 very good who is the present chief election commissioner who is the present chief election commissioner of india my second question is who is the present chief election commissioner of india okay okay i have been getting some good answer okay 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 sunil arora so let's check out these two answers have you given the right answer yes the first election chief election commissioner of india was sukumar sen the first chief election commissioner of india was sukumar sen the present chief election commissioner of india is none other than sunil arora sunil arora sukumar sen two very very important names that you must remember for your examination national voters day is 25th of january it is on 25th of january the country celebrates national voter day do you know why india celebrates national voter day on 25th of january the reason is it was on that particular day that is 25th of january 1950 that the the commission came into existence on 25th of january 1950 the election commission of india came into existence as per the mandate of the indian constitution have i made myself very very clear okay so friends grade up is coming up from tomorrow a very very important series grade up is coming up with a very very important series on youtube every day we are going to have a special session on youtube in the month of march in the month of march starting tomorrow we are going to have a very very important series and the series is none other than daily legal affairs grade up brings to you to make you to prepare for you to get yourself ready for this exam season what are we going to do we are going to in detail analyze legal developments across india 
In this particular series, we are going to understand in details various legal developments across India and across the world. By this, you will be helped in understanding contextual questions as well as comprehensive questions. So, since the pattern of CLAT has changed, you should get yourself exam ready. How do you get yourself exam ready? How do you know which are the most important legal uh, news that you must read? Just tune in to Grade Up's YouTube channel. Starting from tomorrow, we are going to come up with this very, very important series called Daily Legal Updates. Grade Up also brings to you uh, a comprehensive course with foundation module batch 2 for 2022 aspirants. The subscription for Grade Up Super is available for 1 month, 6 months and 18 months. So very very important thing friends. So from tomorrow I want to see each and every one of you. I want each and every one of you to attend these important classes that we will be conducting from tomorrow. A very, very special series dedicated for CLAT 2021 and 2022 aspirants. It will be free for all of you. So do join me tomorrow for this important series. Tomorrow will be the first day. Do not miss it. Thank you very, very much for any course related query. You can call us on 96500-52904 as well as 9319599244. With this, we come to the end of today's class. Thank you very, very much. God bless you. Stay home, stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you. Good night.